Atlanta. This is Caroline Roman. And I'm Marina Abatello. We're reporting from Oneonta Studios. We currently have Aaron and Sophia reporting live from the field performing an experiment using the scientific method. What is a scientific method, you may ask? It's a procedure that guides you through an experiment consisting of observations, questions, hypothesis, prediction, tests, and analyzing data. When making observations, you should take notes and record any information on your topic. When you're forming a question, it should just be something you want to learn. And your hypothesis should be an educated guess based on prior knowledge and observations. Your prediction should be an assumption of how the experiment will play out. And when you're testing your experiment, you should have a control and experimental group. And when you're finally analyzing your data, you should draw a conclusion based on your experiment and knowledge gained. The scientific method has a couple of very important features. The first one is it has to be unprejudiced, it has to be repeatable, and it has to be falsifiable. These are all important for experiments to get the most accurate results possible. Erin, Sophia, what's going on in the Oneonta Farms today? Good morning, Oneonta. I'm Erin Schindler. And I'm Sophia Giganti. And we're doing an experiment using the scientific method to test the buoyancy of the newly hatched eggs. We recently had a flood at our farm, and we observed that the eggs didn't float in the water. So then we were thinking, what will make the eggs float? By using the steps in the scientific method, we came up with a hypothesis. The observation is, the eggs don't float in normal water. Question, what condition will make them float? Our hypothesis is the density of an egg will be higher than the density of water. Prediction. The egg will float when placed in a higher density solution. Test. We should test the hypothesis using salt to try and make the density of the solution higher than the egg itself. For this experiment, we're going to use three beakers, three eggs, table salt, and a stirring rod. Here in our lab, we set up three different beakers, each containing 200 milliliters of water. To change the density of the water, we are adding NaCl, or table salt, to our beakers. The first beaker has only water, so it has a zero molar salt concentration. The second beaker has a one molar salt concentration. The third beaker has a four molar salt concentration. We will now place an egg into each beaker to test what molarity will make the solution more dense than the egg, making it float. Let's see what happens when we put the egg in the zero molar solution. The egg does not float. Let's see what happens in the one molar solution. Still not quite there. Let's see what happens with the four molar solution. And it works! Now we can conclude that the four molar solution is denser than the egg, therefore the egg will float. This supports our hypothesis stating that an egg has a higher density than water because the egg did not float in the zero molar solution. It also supports our prediction that the egg will float in a higher density solution. Now we go to Annie, who is going to explain the importance of a primary source to us when using the scientific method. Back to you, Annie. Hi, Oneonta. I'm Annie, reporting to you from the pit, and I'm here to talk to you about primary sources and the scientific method. What is a primary source, you may ask? A primary source is an original source in its original form, usually without explanations. It is first-hand account and uses direct knowledge, unlike a secondary source which evaluates original data. Primary sources have not been altered or distorted in any way. Why are primary sources important to the scientific method, though? Primary sources are snippets of history which allow students to look deeper and seek additional evidence through their research. One of the first steps in the scientific method requires the gathering of research, and primary sources usually incorporate the type of data that is needed to do such research. The sources are critical to the scientific method because they were created using the scientific method. It's crucial for the scientists to be able to look at an original experiment and repeat it step by step and then be able to compare it side by side. In the egg buoyancy experiment, you saw Aaron and Sophia's results were as follows. The egg does not fully float in any other solution than the four molar solution. They had to come up with materials and methods that they had used to make the experiment work, as seen in any other primary source. When creating a primary source, you need to have a results section, which is what is being shown when Aaron and Sophia find the four molar solution created a higher density than the egg, making it float. Also, in a primary source, there is an abstract section at the very beginning. With the experiment that was used about egg buoyancy, the abstract would talk about the density of the egg, the density of the water, and how to make the density of the water higher. And now, bringing you to Sophia with a fun fact. Did you know the scientific method is a universal system used by billions of scientists around the world? We have Francisco Reddy to thank for this worldwide method created during the 1600s. Thanks for tuning in to Oneonta News this morning.